Welcome to Conversations with Cox and Kielseth. And to be more specific, that is filmmaker Alex Cox and myself, film curator Pablo Kielseth. Alex will join us by phone from his home in Oregon while I sneak away from my office to call him from one of the projection booths used by the International Film Series, which has been screening foreign and independent movies at CU Boulder since 1941. We will keep our chats to about 20 minutes as we discuss whatever movie-related topics grab our fancy. Thanks for joining us. Okay, action. Alejandro, it's uh, it's nice to talk with you. And I'm, you know, last week your your voicemail was so dire. I I, I need to know how are things right now for you? What's going on? <laughs> Oh, the air is much cleaner where we are now. It's um, the air was very, very bad. Even at the coast last week, the air was intolerably bad for about a week. You couldn't see the sun, you couldn't see the ocean, couldn't see your own shadow. But this is part of what we experience these days. Yeah, sure. And how is it with you? Is it still snowing? Uh, no, no, no. That's all uh, gone now here in Boulder, Colorado. It's um, actually a very uh, pleasant late 70s with um, not the greatest air quality. Um, I think, you know, I mean, it's, you know, it's very hazy. Uh, I, I don't know where you are on the air quality indicator, but I think we're at like, uh, I don't know, 175 or something, which is not not great for people with health issues, but I don't think it's as bad as Oregon right now. See a figure for that, but maybe it's better not to know. Probably, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, uh, so you did. Uh, you, you had a chance to to watch uh, one of the things that we're offering on the internationalfilmseries.com dot com website for people who uh, would like to support both uh, art house exhibitors and distributors as they're splitting the the fees. I should mention that we've got some fun titles that are uh, uh, currently available, including a documentary about the Beatles uh, titled Meeting the Beatles in India. And there's also a pretty stunning 4K restoration of... Au travail! And there's an animated film that I really want to check out called Son of the White Mare. And the film that you saw, uh, Nomad, in the footsteps of uh, Bruce Chatwin. That's the Werner Herzog documentary. Um did you get a chance to check that one out? Yeah. I mean, did you know anything about this guy, Bruce Chatwin, before you saw the documentary? I've, I've met uh, Werner Herzog a few times. Uh, we brought him out here to Boulder uh, on a couple occasions, and I do recall him talking about Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I did know about him. Because this, mm. this is a this is you know, a guy who is like a great adventurer and world traveler and, and cataloger of arcane and fascinating information about lay lines and song lines and yeah i mean and the author of a novel of, upon which one of herzog's films was based and so obviously you know there's a danger of a kind of a mutual admiration society but since the guy is dead it can't occur you know and it's just <laughs> it's um herzog talking to some people who knew this fella and and going on long trips with his drone yeah yeah he's definitely mastering the drone shots right now Boy, some great drone shots. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really paying off. Um, it's it's there's some beautiful photography and 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 of of some remarkable looking places, you know. So it's it's worth seeing just for the the visual beauty of some of it. I think you know. In addition to the 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 guy, you know, himself is is a, obviously a fairly fascinating guy. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure about all the interpolation of footage from his own films. You know, you'll go, ah, this was a film that Bruce liked very much, you know, and you'll see like a, there'll be a five minute clip from something, you know. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure about that, really. Um, but I do think, uh, obviously, he was sincerely interested in, in into this guy and into his work. And, and, that, and also he says they share this love of walking. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah, that is something that... Werner Herzog will often uh, launch into is his passion for walking and uh, for and and it's it's yeah you know, well he wrote a, he wrote a book about it too so that's uh, did he really what's it called oh I'd have to look it up um, I don't think it's uh, I'll, I'll, and give me a moment and I'll try to do that but what I want to also mention and this is just completely by kind of coincidence but normally uh, this this previous Labor Day weekend. 
it would have been my 25th year attending the Telluride Film Festival, and they canceled it because of concerns of because of the plague, which were which was probably the right thing to do. But uh, and I mentioned that only because um, I would always run into Werner Herzog on the streets of Telluride, and uh, he was he was almost always there. Like I'd say he attended like nine out of ten uh, festivals. Uh, I know that it was. His birthday is over Labor Day weekend, so I, I and and of course they have a um, uh, uh, one of the theaters is named after him up at uh, Telluride. So oh, how funny! Oh, well, that's and, yeah. And, well, he's he, he's <laughs> he's kind of you know he's he's old school uh, Telluride family, and so he's definitely someone that you would normally see up there, and and he's very prolific, of course. So you know sometimes he'd have as many as three documentaries screening at, at you know. At, in one in one weekend up at Telluride. Anyway, that didn't happen this time, but uh, I, I will say I have to give a shout out to the Toronto International Film Festival because I know that they're 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 having some screenings and uh, you know and and keeping it all distance and safe inside their theaters. but they've opened up their screenings for people uh, to to watch a lot of the movies that they have programmed virtually through you know online links. And I was able to get in, and th- yeah, you said last <laughs> week that you were going to be able to. Yeah, do so I, I've been I've been ro- just watching a bunch of random. Well, the week before, uh, uh, well, yeah. uh, uh, some of the movies are ones that would have played at uh, Telluride, so it was kind of nice to, you know, to feel like I still had a, a you know a little bit of a, a, a film yeah. festival fix um, uh, during this time. And did you see? And so, and so, what films did you see that you liked? Uh, well, I did. I I, I saw. <laughs> I don't want to confuse people because um, it's getting a lot of buzz right now. But Nomadland is is definitely. I thought it was very good, and it's um, it's a very. It's just you know, it's a it's a, fe- a female director, and it's about sort of the dispossessed who live in in their vans and who just kind of scrape scrape by uh, meager livings, just moving from town to town, just taking odd jobs. Um, and it was, it's the kind of film that you and I have extolled in the past and uh, Frances McDormand is in it and she's fantastic, but otherwise it's actually got a lot of uh, no name people who I, who, you know, are kind of playing themselves, but I don't want that to confuse people because we are talking about Werner Herzog's. Yeah. Cause we're talking about another movie called also called Nomad. Yeah, Nomad in the footsteps of Bruce Chatwin. Um, but, but anyway, what yeah. I wanted to get to was that yesterday by coincidence, I just, uh, uh, I watched Fireball visitors from darker worlds, which is a new documentary by Werner Herzog. Um, it's actually co-directed by Clive, uh, Oppenheimer and it's their, uh, I think it's their third, you know, it's a, it's the third time that they've worked together. They both worked on um, Inferno and Encounters at the End of the World. But this one has to do with um, meteors and comets and, you know, and it's, it's, it's very much, uh, well, it's, it's a, it's a Herzog documentary. So, you know, you get to hear, hear the man uh, in his very uh, almost trademarked (laughs) cadence and voice telling you all about meteors and comets. It's, um, it's fun. And I just, I thought it was interesting that I came upon it kind of, you know, just the window was collapsing. So I, I clicked on it and not even knowing. And then, you know, there it is. So we're both, we're both talking about uh, Werner Herzog documentaries. Um, they're both recent. Fireball Visitors from Darker Worlds is not yet uh, available to us through our website. Hopefully it will be soon. But the one that you saw, um, Nomad, in the uh, footsteps of Bruce Chatwin is available for a couple more weeks. So if you want to get your Herzog fix. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, and, and, and like a lot of the stuff on the IFS website, it's really worth checking out. There's a lot of, as always, the IFS website leads you to good films or leads us to good films. Uh, even if we are in straightened times. I have, I have to alert people to the fact that I got a very unusual um, email uh, yesterday, uh, from the director of uh, Coup Fifty Three, and unfortunately, we had to um, we had to take that one down, which is too bad because that's uh, I I really thought it was an important documentary about the the film about British intelligence and the CIA having a coup in Iran in nineteen fifty three. Why did you have to take it down? Uh, well, uh, basically, I got a you know an email from the director Tagi Amirani, and he said 
that he wanted to, and I'm sure this is an email that was, you know, he, he copied it and sent it to all the exhibitors. And he just said, I want to thank you for your amazing support. Um, as a filmmaker who has spent over 10 years making this labor of love, I'm grateful for how audiences have embracing have been embracing Coup 53 and its important historic message. This was made possible by you. But now I have some sad news due to an archive licensing issue that has been brought to our attention today. That was yesterday. We must withdraw the film from all pub public screenings until the issue is resolved with the copyright holder. This comes into effect immediately. As of midnight tonight, we will deactivate pre-orders, you know, and, and again, it says, please confirm you've received this message. Sorry for the disruption. And uh, he, he wants, you know, I want to reassure you that uh, this is a temporary break in our release and we intend to bring Coup 53 back online as soon as possible. I appreciate your understanding. So, you know, I just, I think it's an interesting thing to share with our listeners because it does uh, sort of highlight how, uh, when you're making certain documentaries, especially if it's like Coup 53, which is detailing a lot of sensitive CIA information, but also has a lot of um, uh, archive footage. Yeah, the ability to actually get licensing and uh, rights for everything can be very tricky. Well, and also they may, I mean, they may have a perfectly legitimate fair use claim. But you can only establish a fair use claim by being dragged through the courts. Right. You know? Yeah. And and that's never any fun. And, and and there's an example of that is Julian Assange going through his Calvary in, yeah. in the in the glass box in London. Yeah. Being daily tortured and unable to hear what's being said, you know, in his own trial. Um, but yeah, it's amazing that that's happened. And it's good that you mentioned it. I wonder how long it will take before they're able to re-edit and, and, and what material they're going to have to remove yeah, I, on account of some, some presumably bogus and politically motivated copyright claim. We shall find out. But um, have you, by the I mean, you, you probably, I mean, you, you've, I'm sure, had your 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 wrestles with the courts um, um, from various uh, dealings with uh, all kinds of rights holders and uh, studios and uh, no, interesting copyright issues because copyright issues are pretty straightforward. I mean, I've never been in a situation where I would where I would have asserted fair use. I don't think because we've always had to clear the rights to everything that was in. The film because it was a commercial enterprise we couldn't go to like the financier of Sid and Nancy you know and say hey we didn't get the rights to this you know <laughs> but release the film anyway you know because they would just didn't well didn't didn't the uh, didn't the sex pistols come <laughs> come after you after uh, Sid and Nancy for some bogus reason no because there was no because there was no um no, because we didn't, because they were also, they were public figures. So it's a slightly different situation. Yeah. I mean, but you can, if you tell the truth about people, it doesn't matter. It's, you know, even if it really annoys them and, and, and causes them displeasure <laughs> and discomfort, you know, as long as it's truthful, yeah. it's okay. Okay. You know, you can do it. And, and if they're public figures, you can even suggest worse. You can even suggest, you know, bad motivations on their part and a villainous character and get away with it, you know, as we see in some great films like Vice. Ah, uh, yes, and, correct, uh, right. And other other good movies. Um, but no, in, 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 in I usually in, 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 or always really, if you're making a film, it's such a commercial enterprise that you really do have to cover, cover every aspect of it and be able to legally defend every image every frame every every image within the frame unless you get into a, a thing like what well, we were shooting on the on the street and in the background there was a gas station logo uh -huh. and or a coffee shop logo you can get away with that kind of stuff or the or the brand name of a car because it seems to be ubiquitous and in a, unavoidable in an urban situation but other things you no know, you have to cover your ass or your financier's ass um very thoroughly in the making of a, of a, a commercial 
narrative drama. Right. I, I imagine there's usually a legal team that kind of helps with that kind of stuff for bigger budget uh, films. Oh, yeah. 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 You have to get insurance. You get what they call E&O insurance, errors and omissions insurance. And that's insurance where actually a lawyer has looked at the whole, looked at the script, and said, you covered here, you covered here, you covered here. And then they look at the film again when it's done sometimes and they say, well, wait a minute, but what about that? You know? Did you ever have any, uh, so, any, any major speed bump? Uh, in, in that regard with some of the movies you'd made where you had to change things quite a bit due to, uh, you know, someone pointing out that... Sid and Nancy, funnily enough, I mean, consider Nancy was originally called Love Kills, and there was, uh, which was a much better title, but there was a guy who had written a sort of a semi-pornographic novel about a serial murderer of prostitutes called Love Kills who claimed that he owned the title. And the thing is, you can't own a title or copyright a title. We can all make a film or write a book called Love Kills. And we found prior art, too, with the expression prior art means it, it pre-existed that person's claim. Um, there was a movie made in the 1930s, a, a Hollywood musical, now lost, called Love Kills, oh. all singing, all dancing. But nevertheless, uh, Zenith, the financier of, um, of that film, was inherently very conservative. Um, or, 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 you know, quite conservative. And so not in their choice of films, but in their, in their business practices. Right. And so they just wanted the whole thing done and dusted. And so we ended up having to change the title from uh, the more romantic Love Kills to the prosaic and clunky Sid and Nancy. Well, I think it's still actually my... Uh, Sid and Nancy works, uh, I think, very well. So, and you, you know what? The ampersand makes it for me. I love ampersands. Oh, it has to be an ampersand. That's the yeah. thing. Because if you don't get an ampersand, it's horrible. Yeah. You, see, you can't have love kills in an ampersand. That wouldn't make sense. Now, Sid and Nancy. That's perfect. true. Love and kills. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, you're right. Well, there is that. There is that. Like Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. <laughs> exactly the same. You're right. <laughs> All right. Well, um, uh, I, again, just to remind folks that uh, if you, like me, uh, Missed getting a Werner Herzog fix over the Labor Day weekend. Um, you can at least chime in to the, you know, or, or tune into our website and catch Nomad. And you can hear Herzog moan and complain about <laughs> Klaus Kinski again, <laughs> which is just wonderful because he never, he can't make a film or a documentary without going on about Kinski and what a bastard Kinski was. And it all redounds to the glory of Kinski because you just think what a great actor Kinski was fantastically loyal to this this complaining whining german you know and, and that was kinski like just like i am your actor i will always show up for you even when jason robards and mick jagger have deserted the film i will appear and i will bring the finance with me well they, they you know, that was an actor they, they had a, one hell of a mutual relationship i think they they both knew that they were playing parts you know, um, and uh, a lot of it was kind of ginned up, I think, for selling books and movies as well. And indeed, and, and Herzog made a movie called My Best Fiend yes. about Klaus Kinski. Um, and in that documentary, which is very entertaining, although partisan, um, there's, uh, there's footage of Kinski doing his stage act where he plays Jesus. And it's the best portrayal of Jesus that I've ever seen in in. Uh, uh, anywhere, you know, he's whipping the, the money changes out of the temple, and Jesus with a whip. Yeah, it's it's quite wonderful. <laughs> uh, that's 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 a hard to find title, I believe. So, um, but maybe 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 worth seeking out. Yeah, <laughs> and listen, and let us know also what goes on with um, um, uh, uh, Iran nineteen fifty three because that's a very interesting. Yeah. Well, uh, again, issue. the fact that coup 53 had to be uh, uh, sort of coup uh, 53, uh, sorry. cut out, I mean, from the schedule and from the lineup is also a reminder that uh, or a chance for me to remind people that although we have a lot of titles up on our website right now, some of them are coming up uh, uh, on their expiration dates. So if there's something you uh, you're interested in seeing, just uh, remember that it might not be there for much longer. And I should I should also mention that um, a lot of the titles have been brought down in price too. So, like for instance, you and I discussed um, 
Deerskin earlier in a podcast, which we both uh, very much enjoyed. And that is now available for $4.99. Um, so it's not, you know, it's not 12 bucks. It's $4.99 for an opportunity to see Deerskin. Yes. Wow. <laughs> That's beyond a bargain. That's just the. the this should be a home shopping network, Deerskin. I would pay at least seven ninety nine to see Deerskin for the third time. <laughs> it was it was a lot of fun, and and you know, listen, you're trapped in your home right now, especially if you can't go outside and and breathe that foul air. So, um, if you want to Deerskin, yep, Deerskin, if you want to both uh, help help the local art houses and uh, the dis- uh, indie distributors and some filmmakers out there. Remember that this is a great and unique opportunity to do this while we are doing our theatrical on-demand screenings through our website. So thanks again, people, for listening. And uh, we'll we'll be back here uh, next week. Looking forward to it. Cut. Okay, that's a wrap. Thanks again for joining Alex Cox and myself today. I'd like to thank Jason Phelps for handling the audio and Ted Thacker for letting us use the intro to his song, The Ballad of Slim Cessna, for the musical cues that bookend these conversations.